And so without much ado, I'd like to welcome Lian uh, to then make the next uh, recap. Thank you. Thank you so much, Victor, and thank you, Mark. Um, it's a difficult uh, act to follow there. But I'd really like to um, firstly thank everyone who's remained online. We've still got um, some exciting, uh, an exciting session to close. Um, and I'd just like to spend a few minutes recapping over the last few days. So we've spent the best part of three days on a journey through the One Health landscape in Kenya. And during that time, we've so far welcomed um, over 1,300 unique online participants into our event, um, which is really exciting. And we hope that this, that everyone's found this a great opportunity to get to know more about One Health in general and within the Kenyan context specifically. So we embarked upon this journey to um, both showcase what was going on um, in the country and also to understand how we could improve our practice. And I think we can be quite confident that we have succeeded on those, on those two objectives. We um, really are a bit more clear, not that the journey has ended, but we're more clear on our destination and what are the next milestones that we have to, have to hit. So in day one, we got um, a flavor of the many and varied One Health activities going on, um, specifically in research. And we were able to identify through those some best practice. This was really strongly drawn out as the ability to work in multidisciplinary teams, to draw, draw in new disciplines who have previously been um, maybe underrepresented in the One Health space, and ensuring community engagement throughout the research process. We were reminded of the importance of undertaking world leading cutting edge research. And this, you know, I think it was, it's good to reflect. We were very privileged to be joined for a keynote by the Royal Society Africa Prize winner, Professor George Werimwe. He has built on his veterinary background in the field of vaccinology and uses the One Health, One Medicine approach to work on multi-species vaccines for RVF. The high degree of scientific um, rigor and endeavor that he brings to this is a really clear indication of the need for us to maintain our disciplinary depth. We're not talking about producing One Health generalists here. We're talking about producing specialists who are able to reach out and cross boundaries and talk to each other. Um, this came, that was, uh, a, 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 sorry, that uh, was a theme that was echoed again and again. And so we saw from our audience participation on Menti, people see the defining feature of One Health as being collaborative, being transdisciplinary, multidisciplinary, integrative. This came up in our speakers from our audience and was reflected in many sessions. So our panel yesterday on education really sort of spoke to this clearly. So they gave some examples of different um, programs which are teaching people to be able to work in this multidisciplinary um, way. Our colleague Margaret uh, Karembu from ISA talked about the need for us to learn each other's language, to have a One Health glossary to allow us to collaborate better. And it was, came up very clearly that the soft, so-called soft skills of communication are actually a One Health core competency. So talking of core competencies, it was really fabulous to hear from our gender specialist yesterday. And I think everyone will agree that Professor Helen Amagoni was really inspirational in the way she talked us through the need to acknowledge, address, and um, transform the inequities we see around us. And her, talk, her keynote was followed up by two really clear examples of how gender was brought practically into One Health research using a food safety and an RVF example. So I think we can take from this some really great ideas about how we incorporate that going forward. So from the opening remarks of uh, Ilri DG uh, Director General Jimmy Smith onwards, another reoccurring theme was the lack of appropriate resource to One Health. Um, this is a real, a very real challenge and Mark Nanyingi has just alluded to it as well. And we hope that we'll come back to that in our policy session later this afternoon. But it speaks, a, also to the comment that was made by Professor Dele yesterday. He remarked that we need to find new ways of rewarding collaborative work. So we understand how to reward sort of maybe the faster pace of work that happens when you're working in one discipline. But 
acknowledging that building collaborations, building networks of trusting individuals takes longer, we need our funding cycle to acknowledge that length of process. Um, and it was nice to see yesterday again, the, the African proverb, proverb, go fast, go alone. If you want to go far, go together. And that's a guiding principle. And we need to make sure that our funders acknowledge that. Um, the importance of this communication and collaboration was reflected again today in our um, presentation. So we had um, presentations that talked to the need to communicate with um, uh, communities. So that was brought up in the control of brucellosis and rabies. And we've also seen today a great example of One Health in Practice at the county level with our veterinary and our public health colleagues working together on a foodborne disease outbreak. We're really happy, again, I'm gonna allude to Mark Nanyingi, to have him here today to give us that overview of the, of the policy landscape here. And he also brought in some really exciting messages about bringing in new disciplines into the Zoonotic Disease Unit and the County One Health Units in Kenya. Um, and it was great to look at the Ugandan example about how many disciplines have really been brought in there for the One Health platform. Um, we also, I also noted, Mark, that you spoke to the importance of needing those subject matter experts to be guiding. Again, reflecting that need for us to retain the depth in what we do whilst we build our bridges. Um, and our audience have told us consistently that they are on a One Health journey with us and they want to become better One Health practitioners. I think we've seen consistently through the comments, the conversations and the chat, a lot of passion, a lot of um, persistence and a desire to do to better. So I really hope that the last few days have given everybody the energy and the inspiration to take these messages forward into their work. And um, I certainly will be um, hoping to do better in, in One Health from now on.